In the name of Jesus, amen. During this uh, midweek Lenten services, we focus on the sixth chief part of uh, the small catechism, the sacrament of the altar. Tonight we will focus on the uh, second section of that. Please turn to page 327 in your hymnal, page 327, to the section titled, What is the Benefit of This Eating and Drinking? I will ask the question and you give the answer. What is the benefit of this eating and drinking? You can put your hymnals away. We've all memorized these words, and our catechism students uh, memorize them as well. So tonight, we will focus on the benefit of the Lord's Supper, namely, the forgiveness of sins. And where there is the forgiveness of sins, there is also life and salvation. Who are we? We are sinners. Sinners by nature. Our fundamental problem is not politics or the economy, but our fundamental problem is sin. Sin is not necessarily the bad things that we do, but sin is also who we are. Let me explain it this way. A plant has roots in the ground, and the fruit we can see growing above the ground. We cannot see the roots, but we can see the fruit. And so also with sin. The root problem is our sinful nature. And we see the fruit of this sinful nature in what we do and think and say. We don't like like to be identified as sinners. We don't like it when the preacher preaches about sin or the law. Therefore, we tend to ignore God's law. We will accuse others, even God himself. We think that we are better than others. We want to cover up what the law reveals. We lie and we invent our own truth and our own definition of right and wrong. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we fail to identify our sin and confess it, then the forgiveness of sins means nothing. If our fundamental problem is sin, then our greatest need is the forgiveness of sins. If our fundamental problem is sin, then our greatest need is the forgiveness of sins. So as penitent sinners, we need forgiveness on a regular basis. In the fifth petition of the Lord's Prayer, we pray, and forgive us our trespasses. We ask God to be merciful to us poor sinners on account of His Son. But the solution to our problem is not found inside of us. We cannot fix our problem. We are the problem. The solution to our problem is found outside of us. The solution to our problem is found in Christ. Why did Jesus come into our world? He came to save us from our sin. He came to fulfill the law. He came to fulfill all righteousness. He came to offer himself as a righteous sacrifice upon the cross for the sins of the whole world. Jesus was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And from the cross he cried out, It is finished. The deed was done. Absolutely 100% done with nothing left undone and nothing more that needs to be done. Paid in full. On Good Friday, atonement was made for the sin of the world, but on Easter morning, Jesus rose for our justification, rose for the forgiveness of sins. In the third article of the Apostles' Creed, Creed, we confess, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the 
forgiveness of sins. Psalm 130 says, If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness. It doesn't say there might be, there could be. I hope, hope, I hope there is. There is forgiveness of sins from our one true God. John 1, 20, verse 29 says that Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. What does He take away? He takes away sin. 1 John 1, 7 says that the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sins. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from what? From all sins. And God removes them as far as the east is from the west. Forgiveness is possible because for us poor sinners because God is gracious and merciful to us. He gives us what we do not deserve. We are saved by His grace and grace alone. Our sins are forgiven on account of Jesus because of what Jesus did upon the cross. And faith says, Amen, and, belie and believes in what God declares. We are saved through faith in Christ. So Christ won forgiveness for the whole world. But how does this forgiveness come to us? How do we receive the forgiveness of sins? How is it applied to us poor sinners? Acts chapter 2 says that baptism is for the forgiveness of sins. John chapter 20 says that in holy absolution, sinners are forgiven. In Luke chapter 24 says that preaching should contain repentance and the forgiveness of sins. And forgiveness is also given in the Lord's Supper. According to Matthew 26, Jesus himself says of the cup, drink of it all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. The Lord's Supper is for what purpose? For the forgiveness of sins. What is the benefit of the Lord's Supper? It is the forgiveness of sins. Forgiveness that you can touch and taste. Forgiveness that's given to you individually. The blessings of the cross and the resurrection are not given in the location of the cross in the open tomb. We don't get on a plane and fly over there. The blessings of the cross and resurrection are given in the water of holy baptism through absolution and preaching and in the bread and wine along with the body and blood of our Lord in the Lord's Supper. This gospel comes to us from the font, the pulpit, and the altar. It is put on our head in baptism, in our ears in preaching, in our mouth in the Lord's Supper. Martin Luther says in the small catechism that where there is the forgiveness of sins, there is also life and salvation. So together with forgiveness, God also gives life and salvation, eternal life in heaven in both body and soul, and the salvation that Christ has provided for us. Since our sins are forgiven, there is nothing that can withhold us from heaven. Therefore, where there is the forgiveness of sins, there is also life and salvation. In the large catechism, Luther also says that the Lord's Supper is a soothing medicine for our sin-sick bodies. He also says that it is food for our journey to heaven as manna was for the Israelites to the promised land. Ignatius, an early church father, called the Lord's Supper a medicine of immortality. In other words, it is a meal which keeps us alive in Christ. The benefits of the Lord's Supper are a great comfort for us poor sinners. If, if the Lord's Supper was merely bread and wine, then it would mean Nothing. But since it is the body and blood of our Lord for the forgiveness of sins, it means everything to us. 
Luther says, it's the heart that keeps the church alive. So who are we? We are sinners. Why did Jesus die upon the cross? He died for sinners. What is the benefit of the cross? The benefit is the forgiveness of sins. Where is forgiveness given? It is given in the Lord's Supper. Who are gathered around this altar? Penitent sinners are gathered around this altar. And what do penitent sinners receive? They receive the forgiveness of sins. Therefore, having received the forgiveness of sins, we gladly forgive those who trespass against us. For when we forgive those who trespass against us, it shows that we believe in, in God's forgiveness toward us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.